Hi, we're Group 9. Uh, I'm Boone Calhoun. This is Bobby. Uh, this is Kevin. And this is Renal. And we program the Vast. Okay. So, Vast is a pirate game. And you take helm of a pirate ship in search of booty eyes. You fight Royal Navy in epic battles and get your hands on some booty at the end. Technology plays an um, important role in our game. Um, we use remote head tracking to provide um, intuitive, simplistic controls, completely hands-free. Um, it also provides an immersive window effect. It's like a window, looking through a window into another world. And we decided to use the Unity game engine, um, which allowed us to do rapid development and have some pretty nice 3D graphics. Um, So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into some demos. Yeah, we're going to have to do a video demo um, due to the large size of this screen and small size of the room. So, all right. So this first video, let's see, this is our navigation video, I believe. Um, so the, phase divided, the game is divided into three phases. We've got navigation, battle, and then uh, hopefully you kind of missed the, the running phase. And this is navigation uh, on our demo level. And what you can see here is we're actually using the, the position of, the, of the, uh, what we're using the camera right now uh, to steer the ship. So uh, this is basically uh, this is basically head tracking. What we're doing in this in the scene is we're actually taking these and holding the camera like this. Oh, well, no, but we're holding the camera up in here. So you see exactly what it looks like to play it. Um, and what the result is, is um, very uh, virtual reality uh, like experience. So whenever you change your position, right now we're on the left side of the screen, we're looking in, and it's causing the ship to move right. Um, so this navigation portion, uh, basically what we do is we have a level that we're, building, that we're finishing on, and, uh, you navigate through it and you choose different paths depending on whether you want to maybe, uh, experience more battles or just try and finish it as fast as possible. And um, the objective is to do it uh, faster than anybody else. We're going to have a high score system and you'll be able to see, uh, of all the people who have played uh, throughout the day, who scores the highest and hopefully the leaders. So, um, and that score is based entirely on how much time it takes you to navigate through that level um, and get through the battles that you may bump into uh, throughout, throughout all, all along the way. Uh, so that's pretty much the navigation portion of the game. Uh, as you can see, this, it looks actually pretty good from the camera's perspective, but that's because the camera has one lens. Um, when you actually, whenever you actually look at it, it's not quite as convincing with your own two eyes because you have um, stereoscopic vision. And um, on, a, on a 2D planar surface, it's just not possible to get you know perfect virtual reality experience without um, something like the, uh, the polarized glasses that they use, for example, in Avatar. Um, so that's, that's pretty much covers the uh, navigation portion. I think now we're going to talk about some, we're going to talk about the AI. Do you, can you change the speed by how close you are to the screen? Yes, your proximity changes the speed um, of the ship. You can, I think within a, uh, like up to, a, you can get up to a meter away from the camera. Okay. And uh, yeah. that needs to go as fast as you can, and then uh, farther away somewhere. But it also decreases your ability to steer. Right. So there's a compromise. Mm -hmm. You can't always just go straight ahead as fast as possible. Okay, so this is, of course, an AI for computer games class. So we had to um, put some AI in the game. Um, and I'd like to show you what we have so far. Okay, so you can see a, a ship up there, towards up in the right hand corner, and it's basically just patrolling right there. It's actually just sitting there right now. Um, and as we come around this corner, we should um, trigger it to come up alongside of us and initiate a battle. Okay, so in movement here, there it comes. So it's basically going to just come up alongside of us and start shooting cannons at us. Um, 
in the full version of the game, once it's complete and everything's linked together, uh, hopefully very soon, it will initiate um, a battle sequence. You'll basically go to um, the cannon view, where you will control the cannon and be able to um, sink the enemy ship. And that's exactly what we're going to show you next. So um, this is that actual battle sequence, which, or not battle sequence, battle phase of the game, which begins whenever the enemy ship contacts yours um, in the navigation scene. So you control the angle of the cannon by looking in different directions and uh, try to get your cannonball loud over the sea to hit their uh, ship. And basically you just hit it as many, uh, I think the, the number we have is three. You hit it three times and uh, that ends the battle. And so basically what happens during battles, or not during battles, but the point of battles is to kind of slow you down to make you take more time. If you can finish the battle very quickly, then you actually, you actually get a bonus to the amount of time that you, you take to progress through the entire game. If it takes you a very long time to finish the battle, then you incur a penalty. And um, so that's, that's kind of the idea uh, of including this part of the game, is to give players an option of taking a risk in order to complete the game faster, thus gaining more points. Um, if they don't want battles, they can take the much longer, more difficult to navigate paths throughout the, throughout the navigation. Um, but that's, I mean, that's in a nutshell, that's what happens, what happens here. Um, the enemy ship uh, is also going to be firing back at you, we don't have that set right now. But uh, when it hits you, then it, it makes, it, it rocks you a little bit, it makes it a little harder to hit, to, to aim and, and hit their ship. So, um, it's, it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of, of a, a different feel from the navigation portion. So, uh, and that's pretty much how the battle system works. Uh, so, yeah, so that's about it for the demonstration of the game. Um, I thought it might be nice to kind of show the, how the Unity engine works a little bit um, because it's pretty neat and it makes um, designing a game in 3D um, easier. It's by no means easy. Um, we spent 17 hours in the dungeon on Saturday, so <laughs> we barely got anything done. So, Basically, um, it's a pretty comprehensive game engine. Um, you have your game objects, like this ship right here. And you can place them in the scene. Um, you can apply scripts to them, um, which allows you to tweak things very easily. Um, you can save these as prefabs are called, and then you reuse them at any point in time. Um, and Unity comes with a lot of uh, really neat features like the um, terrain editor, which allows you to very easily modify terrain and apply textures and basically just um, saves you a lot of headaches if you are going to try to program your own 3D game engine. Um, it could take you months and months and it wouldn't be this good probably. So if you're looking to make a 3D game, Unity is good. I recommend it. Um, so I think that's it. Um, do you guys have any questions? Is the cannon just firing as it can go, or is it you have a button or something? Or? Oh, it actually depends. It, it goes at a constant rate. You don't. There's no okay. hand controls. That was kind of one of our goals was to. Oh, yeah, you just have to think. Cool. Um, but the it, if you get closer to the screen, um, you the rate decreases. Um, it all you you get more powerful shots, but the rate decreases. So it's a compromise. And then how do you control the angle by height? Uh, moving up and down? Basically, go up and down and left and right. Left and right. Okay. Conceptually, it, 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 you, you want to treat it like the screen is a, literally a window. And if you want to see more of the world above a window, you need to you know, down look up. So um, 
once it takes a little while to really wrap your mind around that whenever you start playing it. But after 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 a few minutes, it really starts to feel really natural, um, and you can do a lot of you can control very very accurately with very relatively little uh, practice and uh, effort. Mm -hmm. How hard was it to uh, integrate the weak controller stuff with it? Um, very difficult. Okay. <laughs> uh, to to integrate it into X and A, which we were originally mm -hmm. doing, um, was pretty difficult. And then when we decided to move to Unity, it became even more difficult um, because we came, couldn't directly use the Wiimote library. Um, we couldn't reference the DLL in, in here. Mm -hmm. So I actually had to uh, create another uh, separate program, a .NET program, that does the head tracking and uses a, a UDP socket to send all that oh, wow. to her. Unity. Right. So. But it works. It works great though. Mm -hmm. Arguably better than the uh, the original guy's demo did because uh, um, whenever we that the demo done by Johnny Lee, who was the guy who uh, kind of sort of pioneered this idea, um, uh, his demo was good for the like the forty some inch TV that he was doing it on. But whenever we, we scaled it up to something this big, it got really chunky and jerky and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the Moon had the great idea to, to take that data that was coming in, and instead of just using the raw data to, um, to you know, adjust the perspective of things, average, actually average out several, uh, about like, what, 50, um, 50 of the Windows reports at a given time? And that smooths things out a lot more. Because um, without that, I don't think this game would be playable, actually. Uh, because, at least not, not at this scale, because it just gets too weird. And what, what did you have to make in terms of the hardware? I know you got the glasses you're wearing. Actually, the glasses. Need a, need, you need a infrared LEDs, um, a Wiimote, and a Bluetooth-enabled computer. All I did with these, these are actually regular LED um, safety glasses. They have these things mounted on the sides on the lenses. I took them off, uh, replaced the, the, the visible light LEDs with infrared ones. Mounted them up here to make a little more profi uh, low profile and remove the lenses so you can wear them over regular glasses. Um, and that's essentially the most hardware tweaking I had to do for this entire project. Otherwise, everything was, also, was pretty much already built. And the others? What other 3D engines did you consider? You mentioned you started that today. Um, well, of course, UK. Um, and there were some few X and A engines, but they weren't very good. So I decided to jump to Unity. One of the first choices. Okay, why don't we thank them?